Yes, the, today I will uh, introduce you my book, Target, and the topic is uh, business wisdom from the ancient uh, Japanese martial art of Kyudo. So first of all, what is Kyudo? Uh, it's with the two ideograms, Q, which is the bow, and Do, which is the way. So it is, if you translate it literally, it is the way of the bow. So let me explain you first uh, what is Kyudo in, in general terms. Uh, it comes from the feudal time of Japan, where at the, at the beginning, in the, in the 12th century, the bow was used as a weapon. And then in the 17th century, in the Edo period, when uh, Japan was at, in a peaceful time, the, the way of the bow uh, moved from, from a, a weapon of war to an external enemy to uh, a way of self-development. So in other words, the enemy who was outside before become inside, and we call it a fight against yourself. Uh, a fight uh, against myself means you fight against your own weakness, uh, and, and the bow is a way of self-development. And still nowadays, the way of the bow has been influenced by three spiritual currents. Uh, one is uh, the traditional uh, Shintoism uh, of, uh, of Japan, the, the original uh, religion of Japan. Then you have Confucianism, Confucianism from Confucius, which came from China through Korea and then arrived in Japan. And then you have, of course, Zen with its roots uh, in, from, in Taoism. So these three currents are influencing uh, the way of the bow uh, since, uh, since the past and until now. So, why did I start uh, Kudo? And uh, I also explained that in the book. It's at the beginning, uh, I was working, uh, starting my career in business. And in business, you always have target to, to, to achieve, target to aim for. And I, it's, everybody has been through that. You have numbers target, you have uh, uh, the expectation from your hierarchy, from your bosses, and, and things don't go as you wished. So then this was the trigger for me to, to go into a, a self-development path and to study the, the art of Kudo, and I was attracted by it because of its uh, authenticity. It, it's a tradition which has been transferred from generation to generation, and is the same now than in the past. So this is very different than the business world, which keeps changing with, the, with the, move, the, the world moving so fast. So the, at the beginning, Kudo and my, my work as a businessman were far apart. Kudo was a kind of, of private inner garden. And also for me, business was the world of ego, uh, achievement, competition, and kudo, you have nobody to compete with because you're alone with yourself, the bow and the target. Uh, and also you have nothing to gain. It's a, it's a completely voluntary uh, pursuit. So it was very different path. And regularly, months by months, year after year, the, the, the both paths merged for me into one. And, and what is that? Is, is all linked to the target. The target I was facing in my business life was to, to, to deliver my number. The target I was facing in my Kudo world is a, is a Japanese target, uh, which is about this size, and it is 28 meters from where you shoot. So when you practice this every weekend, and you look at the target and you try to aim at the target, slowly by slowly, your, your target in life uh, become also your mindset to approach targets become more or less the same. And uh, I will share uh, today a few aphorisms that has been 
uh, transmitted to me uh, by the masters uh, of, uh, of archery, of kudo, which can be applied, of course, in archery, but also in, in business. The one is very important one. It is right shooting always result in a hit, which is in Japanese seisha hitchu. What does it mean? It means you focus your mind, your spirit, your energy in the proper form, and you don't be trapped in your desire to hit the target. So this puts you in a very, uh, I would say, on the moment, on the moment which is to, to practice your form. And as a result of this correct form, you will hit. So what is the, the form of Kudo is, to, to make it simple, is eight steps, which is you place your feet, you, you prepare your, your posture, then you put your, your hand on the, on the bow and the string, you raise your bow, you draw the bow, full draw, release, and then you bring back the bow, and whatever you hit or you miss, you, you keep your mind and your posture uh, calm. So there is no uh, excitement of joy if you hit or, or despair if you miss, but of course, inside, you still have these feelings that you, you learn to control through, through practice, but you don't show in your body forms. So right shooting always results in a hit, means a work on the form, and the mindset and not being captivated by the target. So what does it mean in, in business world? In business world, we all, all have, through our bosses, pressure, instruction to hit the target. And when I was managing uh, the company uh, in Japan, where I've been for 25 years, uh, Godiva Japan, uh, who sells chocolate, I focused in what I call the right form in business, which is the right product, the right experience in stores, the, the right advertising strategy, and the right channel. And focus the team only on this four form, only focusing on making a good product, finding the good boutiques, the good advertising, and the good selling skills of the staff. And then when you create this culture, naturally, people get focused not on the result to get, but on the form, on their job to be done. And all the mindset is just do the good job, the good work to be done. And this looks simple, but it's very deep. Because you, you, you take out the target, the result you want, the company wants to achieve, the, the, the figures, to the proper form to give to the consumer what they want. And as a result of that, during five years, we doubled the business while the economy was flat and the chocolate market was, was growing 2%. And we never set up a budget target of 15% per year, which is the equivalent of doubling the business in five years. Because if we have put 15% growth per year, the team would have been f focused or captivating by this number and without being able to, to do the, the proper form. This is exactly what you, you have in Kudo. If you think of the target, which is 28 meters uh, from you, naturally your, your desire to hit makes your body form uh, uh, tense, and if you're tense, you cannot draw the bow in a very peaceful and, and, and proper way. So this right shooting result in a hit is, in a nutshell, not to be focused by the results, but focused on the action you do and can do. And an example, another business example that you find is at the same principle, I would say, is, uh, I was talking with one of the uh, uh, sales staff in Apple, and he told me in Apple is only they, they track the metrics of the consumer experience, the service you give to the people. But they don't track 
your sales results. But they track with consumer feedback, colleagues feedback, if you did the proper form. And the comment from, from that sales staff was, this motivates me because I'm in control of the consumer experience. I'm not in control of the final sales, if the, the, the consumer buy or not. And it's the same in the, in the Japanese archery. You control your form, but if you hit or not, you should not be uh, attached to that. And the teachers, the Japanese teacher, when they teach you, they don't look to the target. They always sit in front of you and correct your form. So proper form, proper mindset, result uh, in a hit. And this is typically a Japanese tradition of the bow, but it has universal uh, appeal. And uh, for those who know the Hindu scripture, which is the Bhagavad Gita, has a very famous verse, uh, which is uh, on the chapter 2, uh, 47, which is, your right, your duty, is in action alone, not on the fruit, fruits of actions. This means your duty is in actions, proper action, not on the result. So this is exactly the, the same approach as the right shooting result in a hit, is you focused on the proper action and the result will come. And uh, in the book, I give a few examples how, how this is applied uh, into business scenes. Because for me, what was important is when you practice a, a traditional art, which, which has some spiritual dimension, how you, uh, you, you implement and how it is relevant in, in, in today's world uh, uh, in the 21st century and where, where you are in fact uh, very active in, in actions. You are not meditating, you are in actions. Another very important uh, aphorism which is linked to the first one, uh, which is right shooting result in a true hit. Means that you can hit the target, but it's not a true hit. What does it mean? It's your form, your mindset was not proper. So uh, the Japanese art of Kudo can see immediately if it, your form was proper or if your body was moving or if you were too tense to hit the target. And this is not a true hit. And a true hit is when you're not uh, captivated or by the desire to hit. And the, the martial art of Kudo can see clearly through the body form if, if you are uh, under the desire to hit or if you just do the right thing. And in the business world, so many companies, and I expect that there will be more and more, it can in Japan, like Kobe Steel, Mitsubishi, in the US, like Enron, in Europe, like Volkswagen, they are all focused on the hit, to hit the target. And then, you do the wrong thing, but you can still hit. So this is a, a, a very s important principle, right shooting result in a true hit, and it's not a hit at all cost. And so what is very important for the Japanese art of archery and the difference with the Western archery, the West, it looks the same, a bow, a target, an archer. But in the Western archery, you hit, you get the point, the hit is everything. In the Japanese archery, very much influenced by the Eastern uh, uh, philosophy, uh, the way you hit is critical, and the, the hitting is a result of the correct process. So you, you have something which from the outside look the same, archery, but the philosophy behind is, is very different. And even nowadays, Western archery is more enjoyed as a sport, while the, the way of the bow is a path of self-development. Another uh, very important thing, which is you don't reach a target, a target reach you. This means you have to become one with the target, which means you have to become beyond the dualism of the mental. 
And this, uh, when you practice uh, archery, what is the ideal shoot is what is called natural release. And the natural release is where you are in the full draw, which is the moment where you, you are in the maximum weakness because your mind is focused on maybe you will hit, maybe you, you will miss. But it is when you have to expand your, your mind in the whole body until there is a natural moment where the extension is such that naturally you open the hand and the arrow fl fly to the target. And this natural release is something that you cannot plan, that you cannot control. And that's the, the most difficult thing. And this, what, what does it mean when you are in a, in a daily life and in, in a business scene? This, this natural release is to do the maximum you can up to the moment where the action happened naturally. So in, in, a, in a business setting, and I give an example of the book, uh, I was in exhibition uh, of selling uh, porcelains for the brand uh, Yadro, which is making Spanish porcelains. And I was uh, proposing in the exhibition uh, uh, a porcelain which was 36,000 US dollars. And I was at the exhibition because I wanted to learn about the consumers, uh, how, what type of product they, they like. And, and one of the consumers arrived, he looks like a very natural uh, customer, not look, uh, wealthy at all. And I explained to him this culture, which was about a train in the 19th century with many travelers, many passengers. And I was completely uh, myself in, in the, the explanation of this uh, porcelain uh, uh, art piece. And I was so much in it, and I didn't uh, expect it that this, uh, this uh, cons customer at some point said, I buy it. And when he said that, I was not trying to sell it. I was enjoying the explanation of all the, the scenery of this uh, 19th century train. And, and this is the, the example where you, you don't try to sell, but it sells naturally. Or the buyer buy the product before even yourself you try to push it to him. And to come back to this idea of natural release, uh, it's linked, I would say, to, to the concept of Taoism, which is non-action, Wu Wei, and in the sense that yourself, you're just expanding the full form, at the, the full draw, until the release comes. So you, you're not acting to make the release. And often in the West, we, we have uh, misunderstood non-action by no action. And in fact, non-action is the fullness of action. Do your maximum until naturally the outcome comes. And Japanese art and Kudo is like this. Uh, the, the way of the tea, shadow, is also like this. Is trying to imitate how nature operates to be natural as nature. So uh, we often give the, uh, the example of a natural release. It's like when a, a, a snowflake uh, from the tree slightly, with the weight of his own snowflake, fall down to the earth. So there is no, no brutal change. It's a natural process. And we try to reproduce that uh, in our own uh, shootings. So this idea of, uh, of, of non-action is in fact the fullness of actions, but an action which is without the desire to it. And this is not <laughs> easy to do. And everybody uh, 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 strives to this ideal. And what makes exciting about, about Kudo is that you, you try, it's a, it's a way, do, which is a pass, a, a, and an ongoing pass. And in the workplace, as I give this example, you find often the time where 
something which is a heat came as a, in fact, as a natural process when yourself were not expecting it. But your heart was pure in the sense that you, you wanted to, to satisfy your consumers or you wanted to, to satisfy your colleagues. Uh, there is another aspect uh, which help, helped me a lot in my business life is what is called uh, this aphorism, which is your shooting is the same as your life. What does it mean? It means when a teacher sees your shooting, he understands yourself, he understands your character. And this was a, a kind of a, a discovery for me because when I started Kudo, I thought everything would be very easy, no boss to please, no target to deliver, uh, no expectation of promotion, whatever. I was just doing it with a pure mind. So I was expecting it would be fine. And in fact, uh, I, I started Kudo and then uh, I applied to the, the test, you know, the, what we call in Japanese martial art, shodan, second dan, third dan. You have examination to bring you to the next level. And I passed the first down easily, the second easily, and then the third easily, and then from the third to the fourth, I keep failing. Failing. 16 times. Which for me was quite new, because usually uh, in school <laughs> I was fine, in my business I, I, I was uh, promoted easily, so to fail 60 times was quite something very uh, unusual for me. And then I, I found out that when I failed, I was stressed, I, was, uh, I lose my self-confidence, uh, I, I, I was worried, and every time I go to the test, I felt even more stressed. And, and then I made a setback, and I said, come on, nobody, no, no, nowhere, no, has asked me to do this martial art, and I, I, I feel as stressed as, as in my work life. So I, there was a real, uh, uh, a real puzzle for me. And then the teacher told me, go to the test to learn about yourself, not to pass the test. And, and this was for me a paradigm shift, because from then, pass or fail, of course I want to pass. No, no one wants to go to the test not to pass. But pass or fail, I, I keep it with a more even mind because every time I could learn something. So then I, I, there was a paradigm shift where from getting obsessed by the, the result, I, I was uh, inward focus on, on learning uh, something about myself. This helped me in the workplace uh, and I give a few examples in the book, where, where you have, uh, especially when you are uh, in the position of management, you tend to say, oh, this is my staff, he's, he's not doing the good job, or, or this is the competition, or this is the economy. And in fact, if you take the kudo spirit, it's not the outside, it's yourself. It's how you, how you manage. So all the responsibility, rather than to blame it here and here, you, you blame it to yourself. And then everything becomes then an occasion, uh, a, a trigger to work on your own uh, uh, weakness and strengths and emotions. And there is another uh, very important uh, concept that uh, we learn, which is called Eijoshin, which is everyday mind, and which is a mind which is should be calm, uh, peaceful at all times, even in, in very difficult circumstances. And in Kudo, the difficult circumstances is the test, because you pass it in front of a jury, you have only two arrows, and, and so only and the moment of release is, is the critical moment where your shooting can succeed or fail. And you found out that you cannot keep this, uh, uh, this ordinary mind, because when you go to the shooting place, in fact, you shoot worse than where you shoot in your regular practice. 
So the, the teacher uh, always said, go to the test as if it was your regular practice. And in the regular practice, every shooting in front of your colleagues, in front of your friends, shoot every shoot, every shot as if it was a test. So by putting your mind in this mindset, every important moment, every moment you treat it as important. So when something becomes very uh, exceptional or stressful, finally you treat it as a normal moment. And in, in, in business, uh, we have often important moments. Could be a negotiation with a supplier, with a, with a partner, which is very important. Uh, could be a negotiation with a boss, where we, we want to, to negotiate a salary. Uh, could be a big presentation in front of an executive committee. And we have a target we want to achieve. And, and we are stressed, like when we are in front of the, of the target of the archery uh, thing. And the way to do it is exactly as in the archery hall, you treat every single meeting that you would have in a whole day and every day as a very important, as if it, each meeting would depend your career or your promotions. And by doing this, it takes time but naturally, your mind becomes more even. To give you an image, uh, at the beginning when I was practicing, my mind would go like this, something uh, exceptional would come, was stressful, and then come back. And Now it still moves, but it's more like this. It's less, the, the intensity of the, of the movement, of the emotions become much more uh, uh, under control. So it's a, it's a practice. And the more you practice this ordinary mind, a Joshin, your mind moves less and less. So to, to come back to, the, uh, to this important teaching, shooting is, is as, as your life, or your life is the same as your shooting. Uh, one of the beliefs I've come to is that if you keep this mindset, you'll find out that your business is the same as your life. And in the same way that the way of the bow, which was technique, uh, 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 we call Kyujitsu, the technique of the bow, which was uh, 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 in, in wartime, where people were only focused on the technique of the bow, has transformed itself in the way of the bow, which become a way of self-development, uh, I think that in the future, uh, the technique of management can transform itself in the way of management. Yourself as a person, and at the same time, help the other to grow, uh, so that it's, it's, it's a way to grow and work on the character, the person, and at the same time, deliver results. So we see today more and more in, in companies an engaged workforce. Because nobody is motivated by the targets. I, I, I mean, except the owners or maybe the shareholders, the, the staff who worked, they, they are not in, if you tell them, oh, we will get $1 million, $2 million, uh, unless some have extraordinary bonus on that, that's not motivating. Same for us when we practice the way of the bow, we are not motivated by heating only, but to create the proper form, the beautiful form. So in management, the world is moving, the technique of management is moving more and more, and this we learn it. But at the same time, which does not change, is the soul, the mind of the person who performs the task in the company. And uh, I think that now, more than ever, uh, the learning we can get from ancient wisdom or ancient art, and in this specific case that I describe, describe in details in the book, the way of the bow, this new perspective from authentic tradition can help us in our uh, daily 
business uh, see it. Because in the workplace, it's not only about the technique of management, but it's also about the mind of the people who perform the task. Uh, and this ancient art, when they are really traditional and transmit from an authentic tradition, from master to disciples, with uh, aphorism, they are timeless. And they can be implemented uh, in, in real uh, daily life and business life. So that's exactly uh, what I have shared in the book through my own experience. It's, a, it's an ongoing process, an ongoing discovery where uh, the, both the world of the, the traditional martial art and the modern uh, uh, business life are influencing uh, each other and the wisdom of, of the art of archery enable me to be more uh, uh, at ease and more performing uh, in my business. So what is interesting is that the, the Japanese uh, society is, is very divided. So uh, you, the cultural world and the business world, there is no bridge. So the, the teacher of the, of, of the art focus their teaching on, on the, the way of the bow only. And they don't make the, the, the bridge with, with the daily life in the modern world. So uh, the, the target was first published in Japanese. Uh, and it, it was very well received. And, and some people said, oh, we, we find out insights that we, we could not even, uh, we, we didn't know about. So for many Japanese, Kudo, everybody knows about Kudo, but few people practice it. But the book is not about the technique of Kudo. So was, I was uh, uh, re-teaching uh, them uh, some old Kudo aphorism that were very relevant for, for the modern life. And it, that was new for them. So the teacher uh, was ver very supportive because I, I kept the, the, the traditional uh, teaching, but applied to, to really modern and business scenes or daily life. And usually in Japan, what you have is most of the books on Kudo are 95% uh, skewed to, to the technique uh, of the book. So for, for, uh, for someone who do not practice, they are not of, of interest or they are difficult to read. So this was uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very well accepted, yes. So the first time uh, I, I was, uh, uh, that was the, the, the book of, of Erigel, uh, which was uh, Zen in the Art of Archery which uh, I, I read w when I was a student that, that gave me the trigger of it. And, and uh, what fascinated me was uh, the target, which <laughs> become the title, because the target is the, the symbol of, of your desire uh, to, to achieve, or the desire you, you want to, to complete, to bring to completion, or you want to control. So vi this uh, conversation between myself and the target was, was really what uh, interested me in, in archery. And uh, Kudo, as I said, I've been influenced by, by uh, the teaching of Confucius, then, then Zen. But when you compare to Zen, where, where you meditate, uh, uh, it's a very inward focus, and you don't have tangible uh, uh, fact that, that shows how, how things are going. In the shooting, you know immediately uh, if your shooting is good or poor, it reflects back to you, to, to, your, to your state of mind. So it's very, it's a tangible mirror. First of all, I, I was a, a, a clumsy student. <laughs> so I, I had many, many uh, issues in my shooting. And what kept me going is, is from what the teaching I got gave me some some insight for, for my life outside the dojo. The dojo is the practice hall. So that's what kept me going. So I would say it came naturally to me. 
I, I was naturally translating uh, this, and even if I was struggling to put it in practice, uh, I, I got the learning uh, for my business uh, practice. Yes, naturally. Thank you very much. Thank you.